Okay. Well, we're going to try to make this video here. I should have pulled the Jeep back a little bit, but I'm going to talk about uh, voltmeters and some of the stuff that I've come up with. Uh, something I think you should have if you're an off-roader or you're an overlander uh, to have in your vehicle in case you have a problem with your electrical or with anything on your car. Uh, simple thing that you can make, and it's uh, basically uh, eight bucks to make this. It's basically you're making a test light with it. Uh, and this works more effectively than a standard test light, and I'll tell you why. Uh, this is a 3157 bulb in a socket that's usually for a tail light. Um, what this does, it puts about two amps of draw on whatever you plug it into. So say you're testing a wire somewhere and you plug this in and the bulb is dim instead of bright, like it is when you touch it to the battery. Um, you know you've got a, a circuit in there that's either, you know, uh, it's corroded, it's got, you know, the green and gooky stuff on there, as I like to call it. Uh, or you have some kind of short in there. Anyway, if you got uh, this in your toolbox or in your glove box, you can check out your wires and make sure it works. I attached a couple of what they call back probes. Uh, if you're not sure what the back probes are, you probably shouldn't be doing it, but what these are is little wires and when you find your connectors that you're working on in your car, you go into the back of the wire and you probe into it and you're able to get a connection without destroying the terminal or destroying the wire and you'll be able to tell if there's power and continuity going through that particular wire that you're checking or to that component on your car, whether it be a transmission module or it be whatever, door module, uh, blower, uh, cooling fan, whatever it might be. You can make one of these for like eight bucks. The better ones, if you're around someplace where you can get a headlight bulb one, uh, the H11 bulbs, which are real, uh, they're real long bulb on them and uh, they're, they draw about five amps of uh, current. Uh, that's even better for putting a load on the wire to see if there's any corrosion or anything in it. And if you can get one of those, it's better than the 3157. But you can make one of these for uh, like eight bucks if you want. When I started off working uh, as a GM technician back in the 70s, uh, I bought this like 72, I want to say. Um, it's an old Matco. I've st still, got, still got the original candescent bulb in it. Uh, the problem with this is as the years progressed and in the 19... In the 80s, we had the first OBD1s that said onboard data. Uh, it's basically your computer. Uh, and then that was OB1, you would take it and you could uh, cross it with a uh, little wire piece that you have. It would flash a code and you'd know how to fix whatever, be it map sense or whatever it was in the was uh, Pretty much a lot simpler than the new OBD2s, which came out in 96. And I'll, uh, I'm not gonna get into all the history. You can look that up if you're really interested in that. But uh, basically these would only be used now uh, on older cars or on basic stuff that's not connected to your uh, computer. Uh, if you got the OBD2, what you want to do is get one of these. Uh, this is from Lyle, and there's several different companies that make them. Uh, it's a computer safe uh, test light. It has two special bulbs in it with resistors in them, uh, and it keeps the voltage down, uh, keeps the ground from going through if it detects something somehow. I'm not an electrician, don't know, but if you touch it to positive, it'll light red. If you touch it to uh, ground it'll go green so it's kind of a green uh, negative power I should say so it's kind of nice and you can use these on the computer uh, again you want to be careful when you're probing uh, different components or modules on your vehicle if you're not familiar with it, you always want a wiring diagram because you don't want to probe the wrong thing that fry your computer which is like a thousand bucks um, other thing I recommend you get um, is a draw tester like this they're like 16 18 bucks this is from Lyle uh, what this does, it plugs into your digital voltmeter uh, where your normal leads go in and you plug it in and you take this, these two pieces. So you've got, what is the draw? Okay, so you've got uh, something in your car that's drawing your battery down at night and your car's going dead and you can't figure out what it is. You've put a lot of off-road lights on your vehicle or whatever it may be, but just even a normal car, if something goes out like the rear wiper motor on your rear wipers on your SUVs, uh, electric window motor can go out and it can have a short in it or, or a problem and uh, it can draw and your battery goes dead overnight. So what you can do is when you hook your voltmeter up, you notice you got uh, amps being, milliamps being drawn at night. And so the average is about 50. So if you've got anything over 50 milliamps, you've got a problem. So uh, if you got 100, 200 milliamps, your car's gonna go dead in a couple nights at that or 500, you're gonna go dead overnight. So you, what you do is you take this, you take the negative cable off the battery, you hook one of these to the, the battery cable itself and one to the battery terminal itself. It bypasses, uh, it takes, runs it directly through your meter because you hook these two into your meter leads, into your comm and into your volt side. And then you'll turn your meter, or I'm sorry, correction, to your amp side, you put it on your amp side. 
uh, <laughs> you put it your amp side, go to amps, and it'll tell you what your millivolt draw is going to be. Uh, you have a 10 amp fuse uh, protecting your voltmeter. As you can see in my last one, I, I actually did that when I was doing a draw test. I flipped it to volts when I was checking volts and didn't realize I still had it in the amp slot over here. And if you're running your positive lead on your amp slot and you run volts, you're going to fry the 10 amp fuse that's in there. And that happens a lot, at least idiot like me. So I fried it. And uh, with this, you've got to go into the amp side and you've got to check it on amps. When you're done, you disconnect it take that back out and put it back uh, in the other lead to uh, for volts. <clears throat> the other thing I highly recommend that you get, if you're doing a lot of stuff on your cars and you're putting off-road lights or winches when I'm, uh, this is just a cheap Lang uh, $29 volt meter. It works great. I have a Craftsman, I have a Cobalt. I, have, I, don't have, I don't have a really good fluke meter. I, I really never bought one. Uh, over the years I've used these and never had a problem with them. I don't do electron. I'm not an electrician, so I don't do a lot of electrical work, and I'm not working in the field every day. So this little cheap one works good for me. But what I added to it for 40 bucks is these right here. They replace your original leads that came with it, uh, and they plug in, like I say, your normal spot, your com, and into your volt slot. And what it does is this does the same thing as that bulb does, but it does it a little more precisely. It gives you, you know, you put like five amps of draw onto the wire. So say for example, you've got something in your car that's malfunctioning, maybe a headlight that's not functioning, you put a bulb and it's not working. So you put this to the wire, you put this to ground on the ball, on the wire that's coming to the bulb, you press the button, and if it, normally you, you take your first reading, say it says uh, 10 volts, nine volts, whatever it may be for that particular uh, application. And when you hit this button, if it drops down three to four volts or five volts or half the volts, that's giving you an indicator you've got a corroded line. Maybe it's a salt in the line, maybe it's just corrosion. But anyway, this will help you determine quickly if you've got a bad line or a bad uh, connection because sometimes voltage coming up to your particular light or to your, you know, your electric door motor, your blower fan or whatever it may be, may look good. You're, okay, I got you know 10 volts. I could even have 12 volts there. But as soon as the motor or whatever it is applies draw on that line, that corrosion there keeps it like a kinked hose the whole water can get through that a little bit, but as soon as you put demand on, you're trying to pull more water through that line, it's going to drop the voltage down and you're going to know you got a problem and that's when you're having that fault. So, how they recommend these, are, it's called the Load Pro. Uh, you, they're like 40 bucks, some are like 50, depending on where you get it. Uh, I think JB2 will have them for $44 right now. Highly recommend those. You, like, you, the, these cost more than the voltmeter, but it's worth every penny to me. I do have the bulb and I can do it with a headlight bulb if I had it. Uh, but this is so much easier so you have the exact amount of, of current drop that you have when you hook it up. It gives you the exact amount. So it gives you an idea of just how bad of a corrosion or whatever you have in there. Uh, I also recommend if you're going to be working on a car, get you some of these uh, back probe wires, uh, extensions from, uh, I can't think of the name of the company, it starts with a T. Anyway, these work really good. You can back probe your wire go in, put this to your voltmeter, and you can test to see you know, which wires have power and which don't uh, to eliminate things. These are good to have too. Um, if you're working on Jeeps or pickup trucks, I highly recommend one of these, they're extended. Now, this is only gonna be used on tail lights and stuff like that. You don't wanna use this, <coughs> excuse me, around the computer, because uh, you could fry the computer with something like this. <coughs> mm, not COVID. So, the other thing I just recently purchased was the Power Probe 3. Uh, I bought the green one. I like zombie green, my jack and stuff. I don't know why, I'm just weird that way. Uh, but I really like this. It's, it's good for checking out, say you've got a rear wiper motor that's not working properly. It's got, this comes with a 10 foot lead, hook it to your battery, it's got two clamps. <clears throat> you go around the back, disconnect the wire, check the wire with this, it's got a voltmeter in it. It'll tell you if you got 12 volts, whatever it is, it'll tell you what it is. Then you can take this and actually take the ground lead that comes off the side here, and you can actually start the motor with this. By pushing the switch forward, it puts the voltage from the battery directly to the unit, and you can check your wire motor to make sure that the wire motor is not burned out if it's not been working. And if the motor works, of course, then you know you got something in the line. If the motor works, you know the line is bad. So uh, I really like this. I wouldn't necessarily work this on the computer uh, because I'm not, too familiar yet with the OBD2s on, on my cars a little bit I am, but I, I'm nowhere near being proficient enough. So I bought this, it's a five amp deal. Most of the uh, 
modules on your newer cars are five volt reference. What that means is they're run up with five volts. So if you want to check it to make sure that the computer's sending the right thing to it, you test it, it should say five volts. Well, to make sure that this doesn't screw up your deal by having 12 volts to it, this is a, it goes on top and converts that so that only five volts will be sent and picked up on it, or at least sent through it so it won't fry anything out. Um, I like to say, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't grown a pair big enough to, to you know, test possibly burning something out or shorting my computer out. As I get a little better at it and uh, learn more about the new computers as I just do my studying on it, uh, I might try it, but I went and purchased it with it. That's my electrical stuff. I just thought I'd, I'd do this to kind of board, and I thought I'd go ahead and do a little quick, uh, whatever you want to call it, blog instruction class on it, uh, because you know I won't be able to do a video on survival stuff until probably later next month when it gets a little cooler. We'll take the Jeep out and uh, do some stuff, maybe do some uh, uh, snare, snare traps or some... Uh, uh, dead traps or something like that to, uh, you know, give you all some more survival stuff if uh, people are interested in that. But that's my video on electronic stuff, and I hope that uh, it helps somebody. And thank you for watching.